keep myself busy. Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconANGLE TV's continuous coverage. We're here live at the Dell Storage Forum with Darren Thomas, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Dell Storage Business Unit. Darren, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. It's great to be here again this year at uh, Dell Storage Forum 2012. Yeah, we had you on a couple times last year, actually, as you might recall, at, uh, down at uh, Disney World. I love the venue in Boston. Of course, I didn't realize this year, you, you were born in Boston. Yeah, I parked my car here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can see, uh, you didn't spend much time here, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you just came off the big keynote, uh, packed to audience. Uh, you were here yesterday uh, introducing uh, your boss. Yep. And uh, good vibe here, really, uh, I think a step up from last year. How do you feel? Well, I feel great. You know, it's, uh, it, we're in our third year, really, of the integration work, and it takes a while to get these things integrated. So this is the year I've been waiting for, when a lot of the integration proof points are coming out. So I think you're seeing them in the announcements Brad made yesterday, the ones I made today. A uh, great, great set of integrated products that show best in class times best in class. And it's, uh, it's puts them in a class by themselves. Yeah, we've been, have, we've been talking a lot about integration and we've made the observation that Dell, kind of unique to other storage companies, focuses on integration first. You know, I guess in part you started with the blank sheet of paper, so that maybe made it a little easier, but not necessarily. You guys had to really focus on that, and that's a main tenant of your, your engineering focus, isn't it? Yeah, it, starting with the blank sheet of paper was very helpful, although it was a dead standstill start. So there were, you know, it, was a, it, was, it, was, it had both good and bad. We, we had to start from scratch. But the beautiful thing is we didn't start with a bunch of legacy. Uh, we got to basically you know, search the industry for the best in class. And, uh, and, and that was really a, a, a design concept that was untested before. If you remember the kind of companies, uh, storage companies were buying before we bought Ecologic, they were buying from, uh, you know, pardon my French, they were buying from the dumpster. They were buying companies that were in trouble, they were uh, companies that were structured poorly. And uh, we did exactly the opposite. We went for best in the world. And you know, a lot of our resellers are here today. And I have, it, it, it's a very common theme to come up and say, hey, I was a reseller of Ecologic, you bought them. Then I became a reseller of Compellent, you bought them. Then I became a reseller of Ocarina or, or Aperture, and you bought them. And so my typical answer is, yeah, we buy the best. So you must be looking at the best. At what point did you guys decide in your, in your history, your corporate history, to actually really go for it in storage? Did you sort of, put your toe in the, in the water and experiment, or had you decided at that point that you were going to be you know, a major storage player? Well, I, I came to Dell in 2003, and in 2003 the company was pretty committed to the EMC relationship, and uh, we gave that a try. Uh, the reality was the product set wasn't what our customers were telling us they wanted. It was very much you know, great products, but stuck on the legacy, if you will, not starting from the blank sheet of paper. And so very early, I mean, with by, by probably by the end of 2004, I was starting to have very quiet conversations with the leadership at Dell about uh, th this revolution that we're on today. And uh, I, I will tell you, you know, Michael is an innovator himself. And so it took me about like three nanoseconds to convince him. So it, with, a, with a leader like Michael, it's not hard to get on a revolution. So you've got actually quite a large install base of, uh, of, of Clarion products and, and what you're calling legacy products. Um, how are you transitioning those guys to this fluid data architecture? Well, you know, customers tend to transition at their own rate. Uh, a lot of them are, have projects they'll buy uh, all along the, the year, and so when they come out with new projects, we typically try to transition them at that point in time. It's not hard. Customers can see the differentiation between a legacy system that's bound by the sheet metal it sits in versus a non-legacy system that's kind of virtual beyond its physical uh, limits, and uh, the customers get it. I'll, I'll tell you when they get it, usually when we show them a demo. The demos on both Compellent and Equalogic are the big seller. Same thing with Aperture. If we can get a customer to see a demo, uh, it's a 99% chance that we're going to close. So I think them seeing it, because I can remember in the early days of Equalogic, I would explain it to a room full of, of customers, and they'd be you know, looking at their Blackberries, kind of doing the Blackberry prayer. you know. <laughs> and then uh, you'd look up and you'd say something, you know, breakthrough, like you know, the licensing is free. And all of a sudden, if they're a CIO, they'd look up, put their BlackBerry down and say, say that again? And, <laughs> and that's when you had them. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's not that hard when your products are this differentiated. Well, so it's free and it's perpetual. And, and perpetual. You know, compellent, compellent uses perpetual because they charge you a fee up to a certain point, but then after that it becomes perpetual, you own it. And perpetual is a little different 
because you own it across the hardware. So if you change out the hardware, you can put your old license on the new hardware, you still own it. And so that's very differentiated. Everybody else in the storage industry, they sell you a new piece of hardware, you owe them new licensing. Yeah, so that question came up in the audience this morning, yes. and uh, that, that is different. Um, you really don't see that now, but at the same time, you guys made a lot of margin on that, yes. on that software drag. Yeah, so. yeah no we do. <laughs> and uh, you know, for us, again, it's, it's good to be coming from a blank piece of paper. So for us, it's all new. The other thing is, uh, the customers stay in a maintenance relationship with us. They, they, they buy the maintenance contracts. It's, it's what they want, it's what we want. And so, to be quite honest, we don't need to be greedy about selling them new software licenses each time. The customer is paying us a maintenance fee for the software license and we can continue that process from generation to generation. So, yeah. so Darren, I, I'm, I'm, if you look at pulling lots of pieces together in lots of different products, hardware and software, the management is usually a challenge in it. Uh, yes. If you look at the unified space, which you guys now have with the Exonet product and converged infrastructure with VStart, you know, how's Dell pulling the management story together? Yeah, that is, uh, that is the, uh, the holy grail, if you will, of uh, the IT industry, is all these management tools, and to be honest, the innovation rate is still so fast that you can't make the Uber, the, the overall yes. management S device. Single pane, of a single pane of glass does not exist, absolutely. It no, does not exist across all IT. And, and, and as far as I know, until it really, really commoditizes across everything, networking, servers, and storage, it never will. Because each one of those groups is, is uh, I mean, I come out with like 300 launches a year, Servers comes out with you know ten or twenty. Networking comes out with I don't know how many. You you just couldn't change the GUI fast enough. So the model is to raise it to the point where every one of these devices has an API, and you use a uh, you use a provision uh, a, a policy driven machine to uh, to uh, provision the machine. And that way, the customer you set it up with these individual element managers, but you manage it at a provision level. And we have projects underway to do exactly that. Uh, and and while, where we can, we make compellence management interface, manage the, the uh, file system, that we can do, but across all the systems, we're going to use a provision level manager. Uh, and I think that's the converged infrastructure, that's the converged tool of the future. This is where I think the blank sheet of paper actually has helped you a lot, because 10 years ago when you talked about APIs with less modern development tools, it was like, ugh. Oh, yeah. you know, not really a comfortable scenario, and, and it took a long time. With today's you know, rapid application development, new tools, you know, not only Java, but now you're seeing you know, uh, uh, Node.js and other yeah. you know, modernization uh, going on. It just makes it a lot more of a viable strategy, doesn't it? Yes, it does, and uh, the industry is moving to where customers want us to solve the bigger solution for them. So in doing that bigger solution solve, it, it requires this integration at this higher level. And uh, you know, I want to point out one of the interesting things about Dell. I know, you know we're kind of a latecomer to this enterprise uh, class, but one of the beautiful things about us is the server guy, the networking guy, and the storage guy, we all work for Brad Anderson. We all work for that guy you met yesterday. And uh, the beauty of that is we're in meetings three times a week. So how networking affects storage, how storage affects servers, and all that connection is very <coughs> tightly coupled and I know uh, some people came to the analyst meeting we had uh, where I had Forrest and Dario and I and, and Brad on the stage. You got to see uh, three of the four of us today. Forrest is on, his, uh, on, a, on an anniversary love boat, so we didn't bother him. But you, if you see all of us acting together, you realize how close we really are. This is not, I don't like living in a city a thousand miles away from these guys. We don't have to force communication. We work for the same guy. We're in meetings all the time together. And as a result, the convergence at Dell is not that hard to do. Yeah. Technically, so, got so, some challenges. So, so Darren, one of the things I've been impressed with Dell is when they've made an acquisition, they're, they're expanding where they are. So we saw yeah. up in Nashua, you've got you know a group you said over 500 people. In Minnesota, the compellent guys yep. are growing there. We had Dario on yesterday talking about the growth in Silicon Valley. So. Um, it's great to see at the top that the management's working together. Can, can you give a little insight as to you know, how are your engineers, co engineers collaborating and working together across the, yeah. across the globe? It's actually a great question because to be honest, you know how engineers are, they live in their own little worlds yes. and then you bring them together and they all fight you know, uh, very passionately for what they believe in. So we have an architectural meeting. You'd like to think this is among about five or six people, but there's about 25 architects. 
And we bring these guys together, and nobody can referee that group but me. They, I'm the only one they all report to. So I go to this, and it's like a day and a half once a month where we bring them all together and we ask the hard question, how are you going to sit this software inside of this solution? And it, there's a bunch of churning, but Carter, you met him yesterday, mm -hmm. Carter helps us with that. We have our CTO, Steve Looning, and I sit as a triumvirate over this council of super smart guys, and we we write down, we're not leaving here until we get this answer. And, and so they get together at that architectural level. Once you've got the architectural consensus, those architects then return to their individual teams, and they carry the message out because they're the leaders of those teams technically. So we, we manage the minds of the leaders, if you will. We get them to a consensus, and then it, it just happens after that. Yeah, Carter came from Oak Arena, and of course, you guys talked about you know compre putting compression into block today, which is not trivial. You made no. sort of a future statement of direction there. But you also got you, you mentioned that Apashore has inline block yep. and dedupe. Is that Oak Arena technology? It, it it initially because we just bought the company four months ago, it was not. It was of their own design, but we are integrating Oak Arena, so we will move to that Oak Arena model very quickly. And the reason is, I mean, we could have used both. We own the IP of both. But the reality is the customer benefit of having one compression algorithm floating through all the different solutions, we don't want a customer to try to have to remember how he has to rehydrate the data. If you did it on, on Dell, it's going to rehydrate one way. So you're going to make those hard choices and, and, yeah. and basically whatever with that other IP. Yeah, and when we, every time we buy a company, we're open with the company. We're saying, oh, you did that? Well, we will probably change that technology with this technology because of our fluid data architecture. Do you have a problem with that? We give them, if they have a problem with it, you know, the deal's not going to happen. So. so, I want to talk a little bit more about the business model because I'm intrigued by this. I said last year, uh, when I got exposed to the portfolio, I said Dell, Dell can be very dangerous. And the reason I said that is because Dell is a company that's used to PC margins. And now you're in the storage business, sell, you know, now it's storage margins, and you're not sharing those margins anymore with a major OEM supplier or you know, reseller relationship. And I know you like to talk about how it's all about the customer, but there's a, there's a residual effect. You know, the guys in Broad Street love the, you know, the, this higher margins in storage. Um, so, Dell doesn't have to live off of traditional enterprise storage margins. You're, no. Everything north of PC margins <laughs> lifts the, the tide yeah. of Dell, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You know, you know when I first came to Dell, I was warned that if you got your margins too high, you were supposed to you know, reduce them, cut the cost, then go into the market, you know, kind of drain the swamp. That was the old strategy. And uh, I told him, I said, I'm going to flunk this math test <laughs> because I believe that if I give you more money, you're actually going to be happier. And uh, li like I said, it took about a nanosecond for Michael to get it. And, uh, and we're reinvesting that money. If you look you know, very closely, we're taking that money and that's how we're growing Equalogic. That's how we're growing Compellent. That's how we're growing these. So we're in the uh, investment stage still. So I'm putting more into Equalogic and Compellent than we're taking out. And as a result, those businesses continue to grow. We we grow the scale, we grow this integrated value, and so yes, there's higher margins, but we still like to think that we're uh, turning those into more features faster and sooner to give our customers more value. And you're in a dogfight. I mean, there's a lot of big competitors, obviously, that you're up against, and that's why you've obviously been so aggressive in buying what you've called these best of breed technologies. Um, should we think of you as a company that's going to sell, you, you've talked a lot about end-to-end, -end. so essentially you guys are selling into you know, people that are doing business with Dell, as opposed to necessarily going after discrete storage opportunities? Is that the right way to think about you, or is, is it both? No, that's maybe the old way to think about us, is that, you know, we had, uh, if you will, we had this huge client business, every, uh, just about every company on earth. We had a pretty big server business, you know, number one or two in the world everywhere. Yep. And uh, we could just follow those guys in the doors, but typically that's a different buyer. That, that is not the same buyer who buys storage or networking. Right. So Dario and I, are, are our sales teams, the sales teams that support us, are actually going out looking and ringing doorbells of storage opportunities that may not be. So I would suggest that you know probably 30, 40% of my customers are, are new customers to servers and, and maybe not so new to client, clients everywhere but uh, they may be new to the enterprise. And so we, uh, we, don't, we don't just harvest, if you will, we don't just plow our old fields, we're, we're plowing new fields. So how do you decide when and where and how much to sort of drain the, the swamp and go hard, at, you know, win at any price, you know, versus the, the value sell? 
Yeah, it's a it's a portfolio play. I mean, we have a lot of customers who recognize the value, uh, the, and it's a great value at a great price. We can beat the competition with our value stream, and uh, every once in a while, you have to buy your way into an acquisition account, or or one of the competitors is just going dirt low, and you have to follow them. Uh, so it's it's more of a portfolio game. Our sales team manages this. They have targets that they shoot for. So it, it's in the it's in the construct of how a quarter is run by by you know our presidents like uh, Steve Felice and Michael manages that. And and so I, I think that's managed very well. Uh, but I, you know my preference is let's go after everything. I I just want my unfair share of everything. <laughs> well, I mean when you're dragging along a lot of of software and non-perpetual licenses and services, yeah. you know. You can you can more easily justify uh, you know any price and, and go and dirt low. Uh, you guys have a little different philosophy in that you know you're the new kid in the block, right? right? right. So um, I want to talk about this this notion of horizontal tiering that you brought up um, in the keynote. What can you tell us about that? Well, horizontal tiering is kind of, if you will, the next step. It's the fluid data promise. And, and, and it's very easy to tier within a box. Now you have to tier across boxes. And, or, and it's not just tiering. Tiering implies that the array controller has control of that data. Sometimes I'm migrating the data. I'm actually moving the data and even the servers know the data has moved. That's in theory, that's like an archive or a backup or a data movement. So we can do the data movement however we choose to do it, whether we do it under the original controller or if we actually actually move the data. Aperture moves the data and the array controller and the server and every part of the system knows the data has moved. So our, our, in theory, what we're going to do is, uh, if it's a equal logic device copying to another equal logic device, we call that replication. Equal logic will manage that from the array. We will be able to have equal logic move the data to a non-equal logic array, but Aperture will do it in a very clean way, where the uh, the customer will get the benefit of the new server and the new device knowing the data exists there now. And so there's a there's a lot of data movement, but we're absolutely going into this path where. Uh, I'd like to think within two or three years, we'll be able to move any data from any device we own to any other device we own, you know, at the customer's wish. So let's talk a little bit about Flash. Um, you actually directly participated in one of the greatest value creations I've ever seen in the storage business between whether it was Equalogic, a left hand, or 3PAR, Compellent, uh, you saw Isilon, I mean, you know, multi, hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars of acquisitions, and now you see these, these flash companies getting very high valuations, right. and many of them haven't even shipped a product yet. Yep. Um, I guess two questions there. One, do you think we're going to see a repeat of some of that frothiness that we saw with the virtualized storage play, and where does, what's your flash strategy? Well, our, our flash strategy is, is pretty clear. We talked about it in Project Hermes yesterday. Uh, we are going to put flash in the server, and, and flash in the server not in uh, SSDs, but directly on the PCI bus, and the flash in the server will operate at, at, at hundreds of thousands, half a million IOPS. It'll be extremely fast, and with the Project Hermes, we'll be able to make that content uh, uh, protected. It'll be actually replicated to another site. It has this uh, software coherency across multiple sites. So uh, we're going to do that. That's going to become a tier zero. That, that'll be the active data of the highest performing systems in the world and customers will treat that like you're writing to a server memory and yet, but it's protected by a device like Compellent. So it's the merging of those two. Now we'll put Flash in other places. We have Flash today inside of Compellent, inside of Equalogic, very specific use models that uh, that plays in. But I think you're going to see Flash become uh, the predominant active data uh, reservoir. And when it does that, being able to do it at the speeds we're talking about with projects like Hermes are breakneck. I, uh, there's nothing faster. Yeah, we agree. We've said for quite some time now that virtually all active data is going to be in flash. Yeah. And, um, and you're already selling the tier zero you know, memory extension with yes. your partners like Fusion IO. Um, but it seems to me the key is the software that brings all That's that right. together, right? That's and, right. And without the software, without the software, you can't get the reliability. Without the reliability, no enterprise guy's going to trust it. So you can get the speed without reliability. That hasn't proven to be a good model. You need the speed and the reliability, and software like Hermes is what does that. Okay, and Hermes is... Um, the RNA acquisition. And, and we're going to start seeing more of that. I mean, when does Hermes actually well, it's in a, we're doing a demo hands. of it. To, yeah. We're doing demos of it uh, this week uh, downstairs, and so our customers are getting to see it. It'll be uh, it'll be before this time next year. Excellent. Um, a lot of talk in the, in the business, Darren, about big data. Um, you guys are not big data washing, so you get 100 yeah. points for that. 
Um, but at the same time, there's some really cool stuff happening. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you know, launched your VC arm, so you're obviously seeing, you have line of sight into some of the cool stuff that's going on in Silicon Valley and some, some here in Boston at, out of MIT. What's your take on big data? Uh, is it really as big as everybody thinks it is? And what's Dell's angle? Well, I, I actually think big data is a misnomer because uh, we've been doing big data for a long time. It's big analytics that is really what's interesting. You have to have big knowledge about the data. And so it's all about the software analytics again. And uh, so our, our currently we partner with companies like Hadoop uh, to get those analytics. But I think this is an early stage. A lot of people talk about it, but it's not about just having big databases, it's about having the analytics to go with it. You know, we hired uh, a, a general manager uh, of the software business from reporting directly to Michael, uh, John Swainson. He's starting a software division. He's already collected the software people within Dell that own the big data response. And so I think he's got some actions and I want to wait, let him introduce them that will, will really position Dell's big data view uh, very clearly here probably within the next six months. Yeah, right. yeah Darren, I mean, you, you talk about bringing kind of the enterprise functionality down to kind of, kind of commoditizing yeah. it for, for everyone, and if we look at architectures for big data, really talking scale out architectures. So we talked right. with Dario on the network, and storage, if for big data, if you look at Hadoop and the Cloud Air and the Hortonworks guys, you know, they tried to get rid of kind of the, the traditional storage stack. Right. Uh, so the question I have is, if you look at architecturally, do you think your scale-out architecture stack will be able to extend into that kind of space, or do I need a lower tier, more commoditized than what you have today? Yeah, it's kind of bimodal today. You have the guys going down DAS, yep. uh, very direct attached. They can use any piece of storage, and they offer all the software protection at a higher level. And then you have the guys that really want the storage device to do this. And if you start getting into tiering and thin provisioning and all that capability, you now have to have a product like Equalogic and Capellant. So I think it's going to be a mix. I think the, the quick response is, you know, w w the cloud's going to happen, and it's going to be big data, it's going to be cheap, and then you're going to have these very highly integrated uh, very uh, agile devices that are able to do business analytics, which means you have more compute than the, just the cheapest machine, you have special software on there. You have to be able to, even that data has to be able to tier to the right location at the right time, retire old data. So I, I don't think we're seeing the end of the, uh, of the classic array controller. We're just seeing the end of the legacy one that is, uh, that is limited by its physical nature, not its virtual nature. No, good, great answer. Uh, along those lines, what's Dell's play in the service provider market? Well, Dell's got a, 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 a big uh, play in services. You know, we bought, uh, we bought Perot, and uh, they had some excellent... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, not, not services, serv cl like cloud service provider oh. hosting, uh, software as a service, the, the guys that are okay. you know, putting together. If I remember right, actually, I, I did the tour of the, the SuperNAP last week uh, yep. in Las Vegas, and, and I saw a lot of Dell solutions. You have uh, you know, yep. cloud services there, but also the guys that you know, are deploying kind of software as a service. Are, are they using your storage products as part of their architecture? Yeah, we're building several clouds at Dell, yep. and there will be one that's based on Aperture, there'll yep. be one that is based on Equalogic, because the Equalogic device can actually use that as a group member, mm -hmm. and there'll be ones based on Compellent because of the tiering capability, and there'll be ones based on, you know, the super low cost, cheap, by, by the pound storage, so. So we're getting, you're getting the hook, because you, you got that. a hard stop, but we don't want to let you go. This, <laughs> this is great. So you know the red chair, we love the red chair theme, of course, we're here in Boston. Now you know there's, there's no evidence, there's no proof points that Ted actually hit it that far, so. So you got to, I mean, to take the metaphor really, you got to have more, more proof points, you gotta, which you do, right? We love it, we love the backup story, we could go on for, forever here, but so, uh, so there actually is no video of Ted hitting that home run, I don't know if you knew yeah, that. So, I didn't know that, yeah. I just figured we're in Boston, who's yeah, going to so, argue with the great so it's, Ted it's, Williams? It's a, it's a <laughs> legend, so, so hopefully you can repeat that and you know, have yeah. those proof points, but uh, we really, like I say, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, we didn't get really much into the, to the backup, we love that vision, I think you're going to really drive some changes there. Uh, congratulations on the progress. You know, like I said, it's the second inning. You guys got a long way to go. We'll be watching. Appreciate you guys having us here. And uh, thanks for coming back in theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Darren. Thanks. All right, everybody, that was Darren Thomas. Keep it right, right here. We'll be right back with theCUBE, live from Dell Storage Forum 12.